Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is home to more than 100 billion stars. Only the observable universe contains more than 100 billion galaxies. Huge numbers, huh? But that's not all. Let's assume that, on average, there is at least one planet per star. And that's just a fair minimum. Usually, they have more. Therefore, we can say there's an almost uncountable amount of planets. And if so, can it be that there's life in any of it? And maybe even life as developed and sophisticated as ours. Or maybe something even bigger and smarter. Well. Already for centuries, humanity is determined to find the answers. Search for the other civilizations started in ancient times. We always wondered, are we all alone in the universe? Still, it remains one of the biggest questions of humanity. We are desperately searching for the signs of extraterrestrial life. But what if I tell you that maybe we already have them? Today, we'll explore how the search for extraterrestrial intelligence started. Who were the first scientists trying to get messages from space? How the search is going nowadays? And did we get any messages from other civilizations? The search for messages from extraterrestrial civilizations actively started at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. It was highly inspired by the invention and further development of radio technology. Of course, one of the greatest inventors and engineers of that time, Nikola Tesla, was doing his own experiments in order to hear messages from space, more precisely, from Mars. At that time, many scientists believed that the red planet was inhabited by other civilizations. In 1899, Tesla detected some strange signals. The scientist believed that they were coming from Mars. His alleged discovery immediately caught media attention. This is how the Richmond Times was describing the incident. As he sat beside his instrument on the hillside in Colorado, in the deep silence of that austere, inspiring region, where you plant your feet in gold and your head brushes the constellations. As he sat there one evening, alone, his attention, exquisitely alive at that juncture, was arrested by a faint sound from the receiver. Three fairy taps, one after the other, at a fixed interval. What man who has ever lived on this earth would not envy Tesla at that moment? While newspapers were praising the engineer, scientists were not as much excited. Later, it was revealed that Tesla most probably was observing signals from Marconi's European radio experiments. Oh, yes, and speaking about Marconi, the scientist who is considered to be one of the founding fathers of radio technology also believed that he received messages from Mars. But again, as in the previous case, it wasn't proved by anything, although there were numerous publications about it in newspapers. Most of them later turned out to be fake. USA officials were also highly interested in receiving messages from Mars. On August 21, 1924, when Mars was closer than ever to Earth, they promoted a national day of radio silence. The citizens were asked to keep their radios quiet for five minutes on the hour, every hour, so the astronomers would be able to listen for potential signals from Earth. For that matter, a powerful radio receiver was strapped to a dirigible floating two miles up. Anyway, these efforts didn't bring any result. The scientists couldn't catch anything interesting. In the next three decades, the search kind of calmed down until 1959, when the scientific journal Nature published a paper by Giuseppe Cuccioni and Philip Morrison. It suggested that the detection of extraterrestrial civilizations of about the same technological level as ours is possible, provided that they are not too far from the Earth. Well, it's essential to mention that by not too far, 
we mean the nearest planetary systems. For example, the closest exoplanet Proxima b, which scientists call one of the most Earth-like planets, which is situated just 4.2 light-years from us. The year 1959 is considered as a start point of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI. It's a collective term for scientific searches for intelligent life outside of our planet. A year later, in 1960, the first modern SETI experiment took place. It was called Project Ozma, after Princess Ozma, ruler of the fictional Land of Oz, from Lyman Frank Baum's famous Oz series. During the experiment, a radio telescope with a diameter of 26 meters examined the stars Tau Ceti and Epsilon Iridani. Both of them are sun-like stars, so scientists suggested that they could have inhabited planets like Earth. A 400 kilohertz band was scanned around the marker frequency using a channel receiver with a bandwidth of 100 hertz. But the research didn't bring any significant results. One interesting signal was detected on April 8th in 1960, but shortly after, it was determined to have originated from a high-flying aircraft. Eleven years later, in 1971, NASA for the first time funded a SETI study. In the final report, the team of the study suggested the construction of an Earth-based radio telescope array with 1,500 dishes known as Project Cyclops. It was aimed to search for Earth-like radio signals at a distance of up to 1,000 light-years. Cyclops was not built due to the high price of the project. At that time, its creation would cost around $10 billion. Anyway, the report has a very important role in the history of the search for other civilizations. It created the basis for future SETI projects. Okay, okay, so there were a lot of researchers and stuff. We get that. But did we at any point get a signal from another intelligence? Well, yeah. Actually, there was a signal that is considered to have an extraterrestrial origin. It was received on August 15, 1977, by Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope. Astronomer Jerry R. Eman discovered a strong narrow-band radio signal a few days later when he was reviewing the recorded data. He circled the data on the printout and wrote, Wow! on its side. And that's exactly how the signal got its name. The signal most probably came from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. The entire signal sequence lasted for the full 72-second window, during which Big Ear was able to observe it. The signal has not been detected since, despite many attempts. During the following decades, many scientists were trying to find its origin. In 2017, professor of astronomy from Florida, Antonio Paris, suggested that WOW signal was most likely generated by comets. Anyway, this hypothesis was dismissed by other astronomers, as the sighted comets were not in the beam at the correct time. Till now, this signal, received decades ago, is considered as a possible alien radio transmission. In the last few years, there was another signal that captured scientists' attention. It was detected by Arecibo Observatory astronomers. Strange radio signals were thought to originate from the star Ross 128. But soon after, astronomers from SETI's Allen Telescope Array did some observations and were unable to detect the signal. However, they revealed man-made interference. Most likely, these signals happened due to transmissions from Earth satellites in geosynchronous orbit. For many years, not only scientists, but also common enthusiasts were searching for the signals. One of the most significant SETI projects, SETI at Home, allowed everyone with a computer and internet connection to take part in the official search for signals from extraterrestrial civilizations. The scientists from Berkeley SETI Research Center 
wrote a program that allowed home computers to process signals received from the Arecibo Telescope in Puerto Rico. The project launched in 1999. Over the 20 years, several million people installed the program and took part in the research. Unfortunately, in March of 2020, the project was officially closed. There were two reasons for that. First, the scientific value of the obtained data decreased. Second, the quantity of the data was so large that now researchers needed additional time to analyze the received signals and search for patterns. The scientists suggest that the resumption of SETI at home is possible if there are any other astronomical problems that require a large computation. Maybe at some point in the nearest future, we'll be able to become a part of another big research. So, it seems like in more than 60 years, SETI still hasn't found any confirmed signals from other civilizations. During that time, many scientists suggested many hypotheses and thoughts over the topic. One of them is the Fermi Paradox, named after Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi. It can be described in the following way. On the one hand, numerous arguments say that a significant number of technologically advanced civilizations should exist in the universe. On the other hand, there are no observations that would confirm that. The situation is paradoxical and leads to the conclusion that either our understanding of nature or our observations are incomplete or erroneous. As Enrico Fermi said, but where is everybody? Well, we still don't have the answer to that question. But the search actively continues. Moreover, we are sending messages ourselves, and they're very interesting. We'll tell you more about those signals and interesting concepts on extraterrestrial intelligence in our next videos. Thanks for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button to our channel, and we'll see you next time.